Uh, we welcome the internet. We hope it'll be a blessing to you. Second Timothy chapter three. We're going to talk about what living godly does. And I read a book. I got it out the other day and looked at it. And it says you had to live godly to be accepted of God. And I'm going to go. I'm going to show you what living godly is, scripture wise. And of course, we is Paul our pattern. Okay, now, how would I know anything that I have if I don't follow the pattern? See, uh, like 1 Timothy 6 says, uh, we'll go back to 1 Timothy 6, just back up a page. 1 Timothy 6, verse 3. Now, Paul's got Timothy is going to take over for him because Paul knows his departure's at hand, and he fought a good fight. And that good fight ain't sickness. That good fight's keeping the faith. I heard that the other day. Keeping the faith is the fight. And most people don't know what the faith is. But if they do, they fight to keep it. Because the God of this world, the principality of this world, is trying to stop the faith from being announced to people. And Timothy is commissioned very clearly and preachers ought to be reading 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy for their walking papers and he very clearly states the way that a preacher to live now Timothy's an evangelist but that's one that has a calling forth of good glad tidings and uh, obviously Timothy is a teacher also because he's going to teach he's a preacher, preach the word so <clears throat> in the commission of Paul to Timothy he lays out things for Timothy because Paul's going to leave. And he don't want him to be without knowledge. Okay? Paul, as Saul of Tarsus, never walked with the Lord in the flesh. He never walked with him. He didn't like him. He didn't want nothing to do with him. Uh, he was glad, no doubt, when they killed him. He would have been one of the untoward generation of Israel that would have said crucify him. Could have been that it came out of his mouth too. Crucify him, crucify him, we have no king but Caesar because he was an untoward generation. And as an untoward generation, he didn't believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, so he didn't meet, believe the message of Jesus, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He did not met, believe the message of Peter, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. He did not believe the message of Stephen, you have stiff neck and uncircumcised heart, you always resist the Holy Ghost. But he had an appearing to him. And the Lord appeared to him. And from that point on, he preaches the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ seed the day was raised from the dead according to my gospel, 2 Timothy 2.8. But when it comes time for him to leave, he said, I fought a good fight. The fight was not to live. He was glad to die. Are you listening? He was glad to die. His fight was to keep the faith because the principalities stop, if possible, people believing in the faith of Christ. So the commission to Timothy, look in chapter 6, 1 Timothy 6, 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. The godliness is a mystery, uh, obviously, uh, that Paul speaks about, but I don't want to get into that right now. Paul, uh, it, it's very clear in teaching Timothy, number one, look with me in uh, 1 Timothy chapter, uh, one I want, no, 2 Timothy, I apologize. 2 Timothy 2 2. The things that thou hast heard of me. Commit, uh, I apologize. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Okay, now go back and get this and put uh, John 17. Get with me, John 17. And I want to see the work of Jesus and how that Paul wasn't part of it. John 17, 4. 
I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Verse 6. I manifest thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me uh, them me, and they have kept thy word. Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me. Did Jesus give the apostles the words of God? All right. Then go to Luke 24. In Luke 24, after the resurrection, the preparation for the, the apostles to go forward. Now, did Jesus tell them in Matthew 16, the time has come, the time is coming when I'll be delivered up, suffer many things the chief priests and elders, be crucified and rise again the third day. Right? Yes. From that time forth, after Matthew 16, that who are who do you say I am? Thou art Christ, Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar, Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Then does the Father reveal to Peter that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Okay? When Jesus says in Matthew 16, 25, or I don't want to misquote you what verse it is. In Matthew 16, 21, when he says he's going to be delivered up, crucified, rise again, what is Peter's attitude? No. And Jesus turns to him, get behind me, then Satan. Satan said no to the death, burial, and resurrection, to the death and resurrection, right? So is Peter's mind on Jesus dying? No, he don't want him dead, right? Why would you want your king dead? Right? Okay. Then in Luke 24, after John 17, did Jesus teach the apostles the words did they understand them? No. You know he did. If he just told him, I'll be delivered up, suffer, and die. And, that, and Peter said, no. You, you know he didn't understand. Yeah or no? I, I, I tell Craig, go over and start my truck. Well, there's two of them sitting there. He said, which one? You got to be instructed, right? To understand. Did you know what you were doing out at Alabama Power when you first went out there? No. You had to learn. I mean, Mark knows a secret. And he can't tell it to us. He'd have to kill us. It's the secret ingredient in KFC. I'm pretty sure it's bacon, but that's in the green beans. But. You have to be instructed, do you not? Okay, so did he instruct his apostles for a time that they didn't know was coming? Everybody with me? They didn't know. You mean you're going to die and rise? Then what's going to happen? And Peter writes about this in 1 Peter. He said the prophets wrote down about the suffering of Christ and the glory should follow, and they didn't understand any of it. And they searched it. What does it mean, the suffering of Christ? Why would the king suffer? I mean, that's not in Isaiah 7, 14, the prophecy, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and call his name Emmanuel. That's not in that prophecy that he's going to rise and die. Thus went Peter. But it's in the prophets that he'll die, but nobody understood it. Daniel 9, all the prophets, suffering of Christ. He said, Messiah be cut off. They don't understand that. They wrote it. Are you listening? They wrote it. But they didn't understand it. Well, then why did they write it? Inspiration. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God. I was looking at something today, and I asked Kathy at breakfast, and I think I threw her for a loop, a question. Um, I, I don't want to get into that. It's going to take time. I'll do it later. It's going to run a gamut. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do this. So did he instruct them without understanding at that time? Correct? Luke 24. 
Did he rise like he said he would? Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the what? Say it again. Which I, while I was yet. Well then, what words is Paul talking about in 1 Timothy 6 if he didn't walk with the Lord, nor was he taught the words, nor did he ever believe the Lord on earth? See what I'm saying? You got to find a difference here. Now read it. He said, while I was yet with you, that all things must be what? Which was written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their what? You tell me where they understood. It was after the resurrection of the Lord. But it wasn't just after the resurrection of the Lord. It was when he opened their understanding. Right? Okay. Was there ever a day in your life when you had the understanding open you up? You know how it worked? It came through Paul. Now watch. Go back. Uh, see, what, what is this understanding that he wants them to understand? 46. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance... And remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Well, then that looks like a worldwide evangelism. What's in the nations? Scattered Israel. How do I know? Acts 2. Acts 2.22 Peter stood up and said you men of Israel and all you Gentiles is that what he said? is that what he said? what did he say? you men of who? Israel. no Gentiles I got it went to Acts chapter 10 before Peter could even go to a Gentile and it's because the sheep was let down three times and all of a sudden he's commissioned he can eat some meat he wasn't eating before. Might have had him a bologna sandwich and he went to a Gentile house and got a ham sandwich. I mean, name it. Peter don't eat ham. He don't eat stuff. And when the sheet was let down and said, rise, kill and eat, there went Peter. Peter's out the door. You can eat meat. And if you don't think your jaw ain't strong enough, let your tongue get in the way of it sometimes when you're biting down. Hurts like everything, don't it, when you bite that tongue? Your jaw is so strong, it can tear up old bossy. And especially when it's cooked good. Right? Rise, kill, and eat. There's got to be something changing with Peter in Acts 10. Do you know what? He states what the change is. Go to Acts 10. Verse 35 of 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive. What does perception mean? You learn something. I perceive. I perceive what this means. I don't know what that sheet was let down three times before. I've still walked over here to this guy's name who's Cornelius. They're trying to explain to me he's a good guy. He's a Gentile. Look with me in verse um, 28, he said unto them, You know how it's an unlawful thing for a man that's a Jew to keep company or come to one of another nation. Right? So when Peter walked from his house to Cornelius' place, led by some men, what does he still think? It's still Lord, why are you sending me over here? I ain't never had any association with people and never have I eat with them. Holy mackerel, folks. Acts chapter 2 is the gospel that's preached by every fool in the world. Acts 2 will not go to Gentiles. Are you listening? 
What was the words that he opened up? Repentance to who? All nations. Who's scattered among the, all the nations? Israel. If it ain't, if it's the Gentiles, Peter ain't going to have no trouble with Cornelius. That's common sense, folks. You want me to go to Cornelius? Great, I'll go over there. Man, get me a ham sandwich. Or if he's cooking KFC. I love that bacon and beans. Well, Peter, you ain't supposed to touch a hog. You ain't supposed to eat a hog. You ain't supposed to touch a hog. I love that bacon and them beans. I'm, 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 you understand what I'm trying to put over to you. But unless the Lord shows you something, you don't get it. Romans 3, there's none that understand. Amen. When you walked into a grace assembly, what happened? Somebody tried to open your eyes, not blind you. You see, folks, one assembly will blind you, one assembly will open your eyes. Now, which assembly would the devil move you to? The one that blinds you. The blinding side. Over here? Don't go over there. That's a cult. Don't go over there. You get where you won't do nothing. Well, I think it's called liberty. From bondage. Now watch. In Acts 10, verse 34. Did he think it was an unlawful thing for man to keep company or come to one of another nation? But then in verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth God and what? Is accepted. So how do they get accepted? How does Cornelius get accepted with the Lord? Work in righteousness. Hmm. Titus chapter 3. And you understand, Titus is a pastor. Titus chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 4. A day. A day. Paul, Saul of Tarsus, the mean motor scooter of the Benjamites, is running along there, got a letter in his pocket. He's about to kill or persecute or put anybody in jail that believes that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, making him the Son of God if he's raised from the dead, because he said, I will be crucified and rise again. If he rises, he's the Son of God. You with me? He don't believe that. He don't want that priest in his country. He don't want his countrymen to have to even think that Jesus rose from the dead. And so he's going along on the road to Damascus. Bam! The light hits him so hard, he's down on his face, blind as a bat. And he goes, uh, Lord, who art thou? But why did he say that? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? I ask people, I say, why don't you just want to believe the truth? Why don't you just want to make a stand for the truth? Why do you not avoid them? Because they're blind. Saul, Saul, why persecute thou? The Lord, who are you? I am Jesus. Is it hard to kick against the pricks? Do cattle go into that walk guard and you got a shock stick? Is it hard for them to kick against that? If you hit them in the butt, they're going to go where? Forward! Oh! It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Why did he put prick? Why did he put it plural? Saul has kicked three times. You 
think the Lord didn't work on old Saul during his life? Jesus, all the miracles. Saul saw it. Ain't he a Jew? Didn't he see all the miracles that Jesus worked? Nah, that ain't, he ain't who he is. No, nah, I don't believe it. No, 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 that ain't, he ain't who he is. Stephen. Holy Ghost preaching. Isn't Stephen full of the Holy Ghost? You stiff-necked, uncircumcised, and heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. What do you think when you're lost that God's going to be kind to you? Going to just be loving and kind. Or is he going to correct you, instruct you, rebuke you, reprove you? Well, that's what the word was given for. You're never supposed to go anywhere and not learn something. That's a failure. Stephen. Let me have the clothes, fellas. Hit him hard. Knock him down. Hit him in the head. Here, I've got a little rock I found here. Throw that one too. What's the last prick to kick against? Who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus. Why did thou persecute me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Lord, what do you have me to do? Titus 3, 4. <clears throat> Well, before we read, the Lord said, go to Peter and he'll tell you what to preach because he has the words. Right? Verse 4. After the kindness and love of God our Savior toward men appeared. You fight a good fight, Timothy. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. That's the context. I heard it said, because you fight illness, you fought a good fight. That is not what that verse says. I fought a good fight. A good fight. The word of God against the ungodliness and the iniquity. And I kept the faith while I fought. Henceforth they has laid up for me what? A crown of righteousness. Not to me only, but unto all them also that love his. What? Right there it is. And look how it works. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. You want to live godly? Don't live in your own righteousness, nor your works. How about it, folks? Say, Brother Jerry, you told me that I shouldn't live good. I guess you got a problem with it anyway. You ought to, but you got a problem. I'm pretty sure Romans 7 will tell you all about that problem you have. You don't even know how to, what to pray for as you ought. That's Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 26. Uh, do uh, you live in the flesh? Yes, but you're not supposed to live in the flesh mentally because of Romans 8 and 9. You're not in the flesh but in the spirit. But 2 Corinthians says, Paul said, we do not, even though we live in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. Now wash, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Was he saving us while we were working righteousness? What was he doing for Tim, uh, Cor uh, Cor uh, Cornelius? He sent Peter to tell him, I perceive this, but in every nation he that feareth God and worketh righteousness. Now one other thing. Craig, you called me on the phone at 12 o'clock one night say, Bro, Jerry, I just got saved. You didn't sound like you are afraid. You don't have to fear to get saved. You have to hear.
Patient form. The God's world knows that if you don't hear, you ain't going to get saved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted after you, what? Heard the word of truth. I necessarily, I don't fear God to trust the word I heard. Don't you understand the grace of God is so merciful that you didn't have to be in dire straits to get saved? You heard it. I mean, you don't have to be down and out in Beverly Hills to be get saved. You can uh, get invited someplace and somebody preaches the gospel to you. Not out of a perverted Bible. You can hear the gospel. And you go, oh my God. Somebody else died for my sins. And God said so. I don't think people actually believe that 1 Corinthians 15 is the power of God. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, and was buried, and rose again the third day, according to Scripture. By which you also are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. One of the greatest truths is in Galatians. Do you know what God does with you in Ephesians 1, 14, uh, end of verse 13, if you believe and trust? Did you feel it? Do you get up some mornings not thinking it? Oh, uh, Christopherson sang a song, Johnny Cash sang it. Said, Woke up the next morning, cigarette on my mind, on my breath. And saw the beer sitting there half empty, but uh, it had one one more from afterwards, you know, and all that. And I, I, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why did I go? It's called the lust of the flesh. Have you been able to get rid of the lust of your flesh? So what do you do with them? It's in Galatians. Now watch this in Ephesians 1. He sealed you. Correct? Go back to Galatians. The Galatians are fools. You know why they're fools? They got the word of truth. They got the spirit. Then they went back into bondage. That's what the letter's about. And they didn't stand in the liberty wherein Christ had made them free. Not set free. Made free. Because that's what the testimony says. Christ shall make you free. Not set you free. Make you free. So does it here. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made you free. What had they done? They had gotten circumcised. They went back into a system that was of no longer any effect. I feel like that with some people, sometimes they'll go back into a, a religion. After they hear the message, they go back into religion. And so we're quick to say, well, they're lost. That is not what Paul said. They're walking according to the lust of their flesh when they leave. The reason he says this, watch. Verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are that are justified by the law, you're what? God can't unseal you. You believe that or not? I've known many people, Harold knows I know many people that have left the Bible study over fleshly things. Got mad at Brother Jerry, didn't like my delivery, didn't like the way I acted. My acting doesn't depend on your salvation. My personality doesn't depend on your salvation. I had some woman tell me one time, she know I met Brother Moore, I hate him. I said, why? He's mean. I said, what did he deliver to you? The gospel. I said, then why were you mad at him? 
Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, if I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. He said, I'm afraid of you, Galatians. Why? You went back and got circumcised. Somebody come in here and bewitched you. Don't you understand that's not the only issue in the world? There are other people that get in trouble and so they go back into religion because the flesh says, oh my God, you don't think that little old group there is right. Go back into religion. You'll be all right there. Everybody be happy. I just lost the flesh, folks. Does that mean they got lost? I never accuse anybody of leaving lost. I accuse them of being bewitched. And you know what the greatest thing in grace is? You can recover. Do you know how they recover? By your charity. By your charity. I don't accuse anybody of being lost. They know whether they are or not. And our gospel will be his, his and them are lost. The people that deny the gospel have fallen from grace. In that sense. Now watch. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And they that are Christ have what? What in the world is the affections and lusts? Have you ever walked the aisle for Jesus? I have. I was 13 when I walked the aisle for Jesus. I told her, I was, I was curious, why did I hesitate getting up there? Because it's embarrassing. Did it do anything for me? Not a darn thing. Not nothing. But it was, my mama cried. I was pleasing somebody else. Pleasing somebody else isn't going to the Lord, is it? How do I get to the Lord? How do I get <clears throat> accepted? Ephesians 1. Is it that I live godly? Ephesians 1, 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us There you go. How'd you get accepted? How did you get accepted? You got accepted in the beloved. How'd you get accepted? You got made. Is the word made in it? Let's see. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live... What's that next word? What does should mean? It's there available, you ought to take it. You know what's the matter with people around you? They are not taking the grace of God. They are taking it in vain. They are believing in vain. They're not taking the grace of God. Did Jesus Christ ransom all? Did God buy every living soul on this world away from sin? How did he do it? Verse 21. For he, God, made him, the Lord, to be sin for us. Here's a made man. A man that's just, perfect, righteous. He is made sin. You with me? He's made sin. He didn't sin. He wasn't sin. He wasn't born in sin. And he's made sin all of a sudden. But oh, you understand why he would say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He felt the wrath of God on him. God don't want you to feel the wrath. That's the love of God. He don't want you to feel the wrath of him on him, on you. He let it on the sun. The sun, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? The wrath of God came on him. Watch. Who knew no sin? That we might be 
What? Now read on. You're the walking righteousness of God. Now you get it any godlier than that, I don't know how. Did I do something wrong? You are the walking righteousness of God on this earth. Well, let's see what happens with that with Galatians. Galatians 2. Mrs. Bearden loves this one. Verse 20. Is Paul our pattern? Yes. Then if Paul says this, can we say it? Yes. Verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Are you or are you not? Yes. Then are you new? Yes. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Okay, who's living in you? Well, then if he's living in you, you better follow 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to the end of the chapter. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers and have no fellowship. And then it goes down to the end of it. He said, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. That's iniquity. That's the practice of iniquity and everything else. And I will be your God and you will be my people. God does not like iniquity. And he's jealous. And if I don't show you the jealousy of it, I failed you. And Paul fought the good fight. He showed it. And it caused him persecution after persecution, stoned to death, jail time, finally imprisonment because he kept the faith. They didn't put him in prison because he was sick. I heard a man the other day say, because this man... Fought through his sickness. He fought the good fight. That ain't what that verse said at all. There's a lie being spoken. Folks, iniquity. It's all around you. You better learn it. You better learn what it is. You better learn about the corruption. You better learn about the subtlety of the devil. You better learn about the devices. You better learn it all and fight a good fight. Watch. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but Christ liveth, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by what? Why are you living, people? Don't you realize that when Christ rose, he opened the apostles, their knowledge, and the kingdom could have come? And God said, I ain't bringing the kingdom in. I'm going to wait 2,000 years and save Harold because of your faith, son. Are you with me? The faith of the Son of God got you time. And if you trust him, not only did it get you time, it got you sealed. And he made you godly. Am I all right? Everybody okay? Yeah. To the praise of his glory. Who first trusted in Christ. What am I trusting him for? I've been made holy and without blame before him in love. He called me by his grace. He saved me and called me. Not to leave you uninformed. If I go somewhere and somebody's supposed to be talking, I want to learn something. I can waste my time in a lot of other things. I want to learn. Are you glad that you are the walking righteousness of God? Are you glad that the faith of Christ lets you be born and live? 
Yes. Then Galatians chapter 5 again. Do you believe Christ bought you? Okay. Galatians 5, 24. They that are Christ have what? You did that mentally, didn't you? Didn't you mentally say, I'm crucified with Christ? I mean, Crystal called me that one day. She said, Brother Jerry, I'm crucified with Christ. I got the wrong tape, and I got it. And I gave her two or three tapes, and she put in the wrong tape, and it was, I'm crucified with Christ. And he played it two or three times, come back here, come back here, come back. Oh, my God, she called me. She said, Brother Jerry, I'm crucified with Christ. I said, Amen. And just like Craig calling me that night, I'm saved, Brother Jerry. I said, Good, I'm going back to sleep. Christ, uh, Craig, do you believe you're saved? Are you happy? You glad? Are you angry? <laughs> I knew it's like... Somebody was telling us about road rage the other day. They had it really bad road rage. I said, yeah, I have that too. That's why I put my gun in the box where I can't get to it. I shoot some tires out now. Uh, it didn't change Craig's life as far as flesh, but the mentality changed. Now, can Craig trans be transformed by the renewing of his mind by scriptural? That's Romans 12. As he presents your body a living sacrifice, that means you've got a fight going on. I mean a serious fight going on. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. You're contrary to one. You can't do what you would. You get into that book and you start reading it. Oh my God, oh my God, I don't like that. Are you telling me I got to not do this and I can't do that and I can't do that? Don't you understand? Peter said, you want me to go to whose house? I have never eaten anything. I've never touched anything common or unclean. And the Lord's telling you, you can go. But not only you go, I'm going to come and get you. Then he gets over there and he's in the house and what does the Lord do? He doesn't leave him blind about it. The man says, we want to tell you about Cornelius. He's one that fears God and gives alms to the people. This man has prayed to God and prayed to God, and he never knew whether God heard him or not. And the angel told Cornelius, he said, your prayers and alms have come up for a memorial. Don't you understand? Your life is going to come up for a memorial. How you walked in his righteousness. Whether you did what Paul said, avoiding separation and all the things he tells you to do. That's judgment, folks. But you're not going to be judged by death or a judgment of the lake of fire. You're going to be judged alive whether your reward is there. What a mercy of God. Galatians chapter 5. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If you live in the Spirit, do you believe you're alive in the Spirit? Is that Romans 8 9? You're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be the Spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Do you believe you belong to the Lord and that he knows you? Okay? Then what should you do at the end of verse 25? Walk in the Spirit. What is that, Galatians? Let's go back to the context. Verse 18. Had they gone and got circumcised? Somebody bewitched them. They said, you be led to the Spirit, you're not what? Under the law. Plain as day. If you're under the law, you're going to confess. If you're under the law, you're not going to have any peace because there's always going to be that condemnation, right? Let's see what our brother and beloved apostle tells us in Romans 8. Is Christ in you and are you in Christ? Okay, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no 
to them which are where? My God, isn't that a beautiful verse? Who walk not, not in, after. You know what after means? In accordance to what the flesh tells you or what the Spirit tells you. What does the Spirit tell us? Well, that we're holy and without blame. The Spirit tells us that we've been crucified, buried, and raised. The Spirit tells us that we're complete in Him. Colossians 2.10. It says in Ephesians, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, in whom you have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Most Bibles leave the word blood out of that except the King James. I heard one read the other day and it doesn't have it in it. Plus it took the deity of Father away and made Joseph the father of Jesus. And I'm supposed to listen to that? No. No. That's iniquity, folks. Translations are iniquity. Organizations are iniquity. There's a lot of things that are iniquity. And you know what's great? Ephesians 1. I get up in the morning and my Bible hadn't changed. I go to bed tonight, my Bible hadn't changed. I don't have to get up and preach a lie and then worry about the lie I taught and then figure out how to get out of the lie. If I preach the word as Timothy told, was told to do, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove and rebuke, I always think instant in season. Now, which do you like, cooked oatmeal or instant oatmeal? I think about that because Kathy cooks a mean oatmeal. Instant meal just don't taste right. Be instant. That's ready. At any time, preach the word. Instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebu uh, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Do you think Timothy's going to be liked? Do you think anybody that's been taught that faithful is going to be liked? Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with what? You like the word all? How much is it up there for you? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According to He had chosen us in Him. In Christ, verse 3. In Him, verse 4. Before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, God saw me. And He loved me. Even though I'm an ungodly sinner and an enemy, he loved me. Even though I was unrighteous, didn't understand, didn't seek after God. I didn't do anything. He loved me, and he spent time long-suffering, looking at how people rejected him for two centuries to get to me. He watched the world go against him for two centuries to get me. May the 17th, 1984. <laughs> but he let me be born first. And he let me do my life any way I wanted to, but one day, he got me in front of a grace preacher. And I was told, Christ died for my sins, according to Scripture, was buried and rose again the third day, according to Scripture, and it satisfied God. And I trusted it. Amen.